Hello, my name is Lee Zuket, and I work on the Microsoft PowerCat team. This is my take on PowerCat Live, PowerCat 4, as in for the topic at hand. And our topic today is the Power Platform and SAP. And this video is going to focus specifically on what is SAP. What I found interesting, really, was how SAP as a product is delivered to its customers, at least before the cloud kicked in. But without further ado, let's head on over and speak with Holger about what is SAP. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's uh, PowerCat 4, SAP for Beginners. Today, we are going to be speaking with Holger, and I'm just going to jump right in for our first uh, session and, and let Holger introduce himself. So, Holger, take it away. Thank you very much, Lee. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, my name is Holger, Holger Buchelt. Um, I joined Microsoft five years ago, um, now working in the product management for SAP architecture and integration. And yeah, before I joined Microsoft, I was working at SAP for over 10 years. So they are doing, doing a lot of integration stuff on the, on the SAP side at the time. Excellent, excellent. So it's, that's, <laughs> it's a good number of years to actually work with one, one product. You know, one of the questions I always have, you know, I've been around quote unquote SAP for a while, but I know myself and, and others, it's like, yeah, we've heard it. We kind of vaguely know what it is. What is SAP? SAP is the largest or one of the largest um, producers of software for managing business processes. Um, so when, when you think of um, how do you run and operate um, your company, how do you uh, run your, your, your business, then SAP has developed um, a solution almost 50 years ago. So SAP is actually um, celebrating its 50th anniversary this year um, for Enterprise Resource Planning, ERP. And with this um, Enterprise Resource Planning, they, they cover yeah, finance, sales and distribution, human resources, supply chain, material management. And that's basically what, what SAP is, is doing. Now, they have been around for 50 years. Um, so when you, when you actually look at companies, um, you can see that a lot of large companies, so 99 out of the 100 largest companies actually run SAP. Um, if you look at, um, th there's some, some interesting number, like 77% of the world's transactional revenue touches an SAP system, which is, wow. which is just amazing. Yeah. If you look at Microsoft, we are a big um, SAP customer as well. So when we sell an Xbox, when we um, build an Xbox, when we ship an Xbox, um, um, SAP is a big part of all of these processes, I would say. Excellent. That's amazing. Let's before we go any further, let's jump in. Can we show the folks what SAP really looks like? That's another thing. I've, I've Up until you and I started working together, I'd rarely ever seen SAP up front. And that's, that's a very, very interesting point because, um, I mean, SAP has been around for a very, very long time. And they started, actually, they, they started with um, um, something called R2, which was um, mainframe driven. And then they had the switch to R3. And R3 was a was was the first time that they really had this server client based arm architecture and the way how you as an end user would interact with the SAP system was done um, via this SAP GUI so this SAP easy access and and what it allows you basically is you you could drill down here you can navigate and you can call these transactions but what made it actually really really powerful is um, that you had all these codes here. So if I'm working on business partners, I, I don't need to navigate in here. What I can do is I can just um, type the transaction code BP mm -hmm. and now the program to, to list um, business partners starts. So I can navigate in here, I can take a look at this and, and update this business partner, for example, directly from my SAP GUI. Now, I, I think you can imagine that this is very powerful, very efficient, so if you are, um, um, a, a pro user that knows how to work with SAP, then it's very easy to navigate here via these these transactions and go to the um, the uh, screens that you are interested in. But yeah. well, I think what you also see is this is probably not the most beautiful screen um, <laughs> that you, that you have ever seen, and that's where um, I think almost almost ten years ago, um, SAP started um, to introduce something called SAP Fiori. So this was a browser-based, so this is a browser-based um, user experience where you have all these these tiles here 
And um, these tiles simplify, obviously, the, the navigation, make it more um, user friendly. And for example, um, if, we, if we take a look at um, one of these tiles here, then now we're, we're connecting from the browser to the SAP system. We are calling so OData services. And, and now you get a much more beautiful list here, for example, of um, products from the SAP system now in this SAP Fiori inter interface. And obviously that, that's something that really helped and, and is um, a key component of the, the latest version of an SAP system, the S4 HANA. So obviously still focusing on the ERP processes, but yeah. um, using yeah. new technologies, using in-memory um, technologies and stuff like that. And and now obviously with these Fiori screens in a, in a much, much more um, beautiful user interface. So the R3 was still very mainframe-ish from a UI perspective. Very codes, you know, you had, like you said, you had to memorize all these little codes as opposed to point and click like we're accustomed to today. Absolutely, yeah. And it, um, th that, it, it just addressed different user bases, I would say. So as a, as a casual user who creates a leave request uh, once a year or a few times a year, or who just wants to look up, then remembering these transaction codes doesn't really make a lot of sense. That was always a hurdle. And, and now with this SAP yeah. Fiori um, user interface, it's, um, it's much more intuitive. It's much more easy to navigate, I would say. Excellent, excellent. So what is it about SAP? You know, why, why are so many, including Microsoft folks using SAP? So I think the, the, the huge advantage or the, the benefit um, of an SAP system is that it comes with lots of um, pre-configured modules. Mm -hmm. So um, again, if, we are, if we're looking at certain business processes um, in financial, in supply chain, in whatever, SAP provides you with yeah, more or less pre-configured content, so standard processes. Um, if the, the, the um, financial um, order to cash process, for example, that is a fairly standard process. And um, if you compare multiple companies, then the, the, the process is more or less always the yeah. same. So that's a huge benefit where, where SAP comes in and says, look, this is something pre-configured. You can use it. And in, in a lot of cases, this actually um, works. So, so that is that is really one of the, the the benefits that SAP here brings to the table. Now, um, obviously, it does not always fit, <laughs> and that's where um, in the past SAP offered a lot of flexibility that you could really go in the code, do modification, change um, um, processes and stuff like that, and um, that was good for me as a company to to adjust and and do the changes. But obviously, it was a nightmare once I upgraded to a new version because then I had all these these modifications in it and and that didn't really work out so in recent years SAP started with this uh, yeah, mantra keep the core clean basically don't do any modifications in your SAP system but build extensions and customizations um, outside of the core and that's actually one of the area where we see a lot of customers at the moment using the power platform um, connecting to the SAP system so, so really keeping the core clean, keeping the standard processes from SAP as they are, keeping the standard APIs and services as they are, but then innovating and building um, new technologies, new functionalities, new user interface, new automation processes outside of the SAP system using the Power Platform, for example. So, so you'd mentioned this when we first started speaking. They literally gave them the source code. They gave them the source code, yes, yeah. and and that's that's actually still um still there. I mean, it's not encouraged anymore, obviously, yeah. to to do modifications. But if something wasn't the way I liked it, if this process wasn't as as I liked it, or if if a UI wasn't the way how I, I I liked it, then I could go into the source code. I could open up the debugger. Obviously, I needed to have permissions to do this, but um I. Um, could look at the source code. I could see what they're doing, and I could go in there and modify the source code. Yeah, yeah. that's that's that. Uh, that reminds me of my old Fox Pro days with some accounting packages I had. They gave us the source, and I had totally forgotten that until you mentioned that. I'm dating myself by mentioning Fox Pro, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are enterprises using using the, these features of SAP? Obviously, going to code allows you to do a lot of, but beyond that, how are enterprises themselves actively using it today? Yeah, so, so I think um, in a lot of um, cases, it's really these these standard processes in finance and um, when you have an order to pray, um, pro, um, order to cash um, process, um, when you when you look at um, hire to retire in the HR area. So, so I think that's 
where um, customers are using the SAP system. But again, what, what, what we see now more and more, especially in this combination with the Power Platform, is that um, customers are using this to create new applications, to create new automation flows, to um, obviously have these standard processes on the SAP side, but then really leverage and, and, and build on top of that. Um, yeah. I think um, what, what I'm working right now a lot with, with SAP and, and, and customers is the Teams integration. And if you just see how easy it is to use Power Virtual Agent, for example, to um, create a new chat or collaborative experience in, in Teams while connecting to your SAP system, that's something that we see um, really a lot with, with customers. So yes, um, the, the, the stable core system of your SAP system, um, also using Fiori applications. Mm -hmm. so, so SAP provides a lot of SAP Fiori applications out of the box and that, that's perfectly fine. But then if you want to do extensions, if you want to um, create integrations into Excel, if you want to create um, um, uh, collaborative experiences, that's where um, especially this this combination with the Power Platform is something that resonates extremely well with our customers. So so really taking the standard processes del delivered by SAP, but then building new scenarios, enhancing scenarios um, that uh, yeah leverage the, the the services of your SAP system, but now bringing this information in the Power Platform into Office, into Teams, and so on. So that sounds like it's part of the roadmap. Is there any other nuance to the roadmap for SAP? Um, well, when, when we specifically look at the, the integration with the Power Platform, then um, we, we have already connectors that um, allow you to connect via um, RPA mm -hmm. with Power Automate Desktop. We have an SAP certified um, SAP ERP connector that um, connects, allows you to connect to these um, technical proprietary APIs from an SAP system called um, BAPIs, business APIs. So we have an, a certified connector there. We have um, HTTP connectors, or, or now we have an um, OData connector in private preview that very much like um, what is done in the Fiori user interface allows us to connect to the underlying technology, but now build um, a power app on top of this, for example. So there's a lot of things um, in, in the area where we um, uh, simplify and um, enhance the connectivity from the power platform into the SAP system, where we're really looking how can we leverage the, the, the latest APIs from the um, from the SAP side to integrate in into um, Power Platform? So, so that's definitely one area where we are um, uh, having some, some some cool features on the roadmap for for the Power Platform. And then, as mentioned, um, whenever I talk to customers, the Teams integration is currently top of mind. Um, so they have an SAP system. Um, and uh, users are using it via Fiori and, and, and so on. But what they are missing is the collaborative um, um, angle of this, basically. So um, before I um, create a purchase order or when, when I look at a certain um, supply chain issue, when I look work with my um, suppliers, that I have this possibility to easily collaborate um, with my counterparts. So, so there are a lot of things happening that, that we are doing also with SAP, really to um, have this integration of SAP into Teams, um, into Office, into Excel. Um, th there, there, there are a lot of things that we're currently working on and that are um, on the roadmap to come for SAP and, and the integration with the Microsoft tools. Excellent. That connection with Power Platform, Power Apps is what I'm particularly interested in. So we'll have to have some other sessions that, that do a deeper dive into to that nitty gritty piece of it that uh, uh, that will, will show the hooking in uh, of the SAP to the Power Platform. Is there anything else you'd like to say before we uh, wrap it up for the day? Um, maybe just one thing, if you are interested in SAP and, and the Microsoft world, then we have a weekly podcast, um, SAP on Azure, where we basically talk about um, anything related to SAP and Microsoft. So we will also talk a lot about SAP and the Power Platform, where we show some, some cool integrations. So if you uh, are interested in this Excellent. area, then I can recommend to check out the podcast SAP, uh, for or on azure or for azure I'll, I'll put the link up once I it is it. called sap on azure because that's where we started but in the meantime we're, we're talking a lot about sap and azure it, i would say it, perfect okay holger i really appreciate this time that you spent with us to explain uh, the you know that that foundation of what sap is because like i said we've all heard it and I, myself and i know a few others don't really know what it was or even what it looked like. So I really appreciate you showing that and, and spending the time with us. Thank you very much for the your, well, again, for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Take care, bye-bye.